Well, how's your layout doing in the hot weather? I'll explain some possible problems that we may encounter and some possible things that we could do to, to protect ourselves, if you like. Well, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome back to Piccadilly. It's about been a couple of weeks and things in my life now are starting to calm down somewhat. I have a new job starting September. Yay! And I will be taking on a class. So I'll explain a little bit more what might happen to the layout a little bit nearer the time. We'll take it from there. All right. Anyway, back to the video. So hot weather. There's going to be some problems and there are some things that we can do to protect ourselves. Now, I've had a little bit of track pop, as you can probably see there. It's literally just jumped out of these um, points here, or these flish plates. And also there is a bit there, which is not looking that great. So it looks like the fish plate is underneath the track there. So I'll obviously have to have this up and replace that. And obviously I'll need to cut this and replace that, or even maybe even a bigger piece, and maybe put a piece of set track in there. So why is that happening? Well, basically because metal expands in the heat and contracts in the cold weather. So this actually is a very good time to lay your track because it is actually at its longest. It doesn't expand much, maybe up to a millimetre. But the point is, if you don't leave gaps in your track and you lay your track in the winter, you're going to find that the two ends of the track are going to push against other pieces of track and it will burst out the chairs just like it has done there. And once that happens, there's no saving it. That piece of track now is forever damaged and I will never, ever be able to get that back in. That is a replacement piece. So that's what can happen to our track. It can expand and push against other pieces and then go pop. It happens on the real railways from time to time and Network Rail are forever making sure that there are at least expansion gaps left between pieces of track. That's why we get the clickety-click, clickety-click, clickety-click sounds, because it's the gaps in the track, as you probably realise. But other things can also happen as well. Now, if you've got buildings which are made from card, now I like that, or in other words, my example of New Mills Central Station, Card buildings are particularly susceptible because it depends on what you've glued it together with. I use a standard industrial PVA, i.e. that. Now, there are many brands of PVA out there, but I do find that to be not only very cheap, I think that's around about 12, 13 pounds now, so it has gone up, but it's very good for what it is. But my point is use a good quality PVA or glue, whatever glue that might be, but always use a good one. Don't use the cheap stuff because your, your buildings might just delaminate. Now, the other thing that can happen, and you might be thinking, well, why am I looking at points? I've got a whole huge number of points there as you can see as it's all coming into Piccadilly but some things that can happen based on what I was saying about expansion of track sometimes you might end up with a short and you think well why have I got a short it was running the last time it's because sometimes the track expands and say for example the track expands and bursts through one of these plastic connectors and it shouldn't you're going to end up with a short because this piece has the same polarity and that piece and that piece would have an opposite polarity so if that if one of those touches that automatically becomes that polarity and yet if that point is set this way that's an immediate short so things like that may occur so what can we do to stop that well not a lot really i mean it's leaving gaps between your tracks it is putting these plastic fish plates in which will help because they do have a little bit of plastic which sticks up to help separate the rails but again like I said if they if those two touch there's a possibility of a short so 
personally, I would suggest don't do anything to it and leave it, leave the, uh, leave it for two or three days until the weather becomes a bit cooler. Then try running the layout again. It's possible that it's just expanded and as it gets cooler, the tracks will start to contract. It might be just that problem. So just don't do too much whilst it's still hot is my point. But there might also be some other electrical issues. But again, don't rush in to try and fix it. Just hang on a few days until it's cooler. Well, you might be wondering why we're looking at the points again, but in actual fact, we're looking more at the point motors. And the reason being is sometimes in hot weather, they can become a little bit um, sticky. In other words, they don't fire quite as well. They might not reach the other side or if fire at all. And again, it might just be because it's so hot and it just needs to cool down a little bit. So don't do too much. Leave it. And again, try it again in another couple of days. Things might just sort themselves out. Another thing to consider, if this isn't too obvious, if you're planning on doing any painting or any decals or airbrushing, those sorts of things are going to dry an awful lot quicker than what they would do normally. So you might just have to plan ahead a little bit and make sure you can achieve what you want to achieve in the drying time that you're given. So it might be worth just a little practice go on something else. Um, if you're doing airbrushing, it might be a good idea to add some of this, um, which is glycerine, or you can buy a flow aid, because this is just the sort of stuff they put in a flow aid, which will help the paint stay wetter for a little bit longer. Not sure quite how much longer, but it will certainly give you a lot longer than what it would do if you didn't put it in. I got that trick from someone else. <laughs> You might be saying to me, John, the temperature on Monday and Tuesday next week is going to be nearly 40, perhaps. So how can we stop the heat? Well, if you've noticed, I've got my curtains drawn. If you've got your layout in direct sun, therefore, it's going to get hotter on your layout because the window, the glass will act as a lens. And therefore, your room or area will get even hotter. Now, if you've got your layout in an attic, perhaps less so in a shed, but if you've got it in an attic, it's going to be incredibly hot. So maybe I would suggest even putting a fan up there or two. Right, just to sum up then, um, the hot weather can cause us all sorts of problems on model railways. Expansion of track, electrical problems, points might stick, glues might delaminate. Um, not to mention a whole raft of paint problems, including blooming and all sorts of things like that. Um, but again, all of these things, they may happen and they may not. And we can we can worry about what's going to happen about our model railway. Draw your curtains, get as much light off them as possible. So they just sit. If you're able to cover your layout and you've got some, say, muslin or something like that and your layout is a suitable size to do that, do it. But I can't do that with mine. It's over 10 foot long and there's no way I can cover mine. So I'm just going to see what happens. If there's a problem, I'll deal with it and I'll show you what I do to deal with it. But um, personally, I love the hot weather. But I think at the end of the day, we've just got to be sensible and safe whatever that might be, and helping to keep our layout sense, uh, safe is part of that, particularly if we really love our hobby. Okay, so take it one step at a time, one day at a time. I'll see you again very, very soon here on Piccadilly. Take care of yourself. Bye for now.